Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Edna White, your host of Keeping It Real on Purpose. And today, our guest is none other than Barbara J. Hunt. You're wondering, who is she? She's the author of Forgiveness Made Easy. I just told her this is what I was thinking. She put it down in writing. This book teaches you truly how to forgive and to let go. And this is what I like about this book a whole lot. But welcome to the show, Barbara. Thanks, Edna. It's great to be here. I am so excited for you to talk about this topic. And you break this down so well in this book about forgiveness. And pre-show, I said to you, we've learned to adapt to this fake forgiveness. Um, you know, we, we forgive them because we have to love them and we forgive them and they're not in our purview, but we really haven't. And one thing I know about forgiveness is that forgiveness tells on you if you don't really forgive because it's, you act it out, you behave badly, right? And your body, your body starts to feel that unforgiveness. So, you know, break it down to us. Tell us all about you. I'm, I'm, I know I'm getting excited about the book audience. I know. But Barbara, <laughs> break it down for us on how you, you, this book was birthed. Well, it was partly because I had a lot to say about forgiveness. And okay. I was just like you, there's a lot out there in about forgiveness, but not really about the how. The yeah. how is the hard part. And there's yes. a lot of fake fig forgiveness, pseudo forgiveness. You know, yes. th there's, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding about it. And right. I, I recognized it as such an important thing we can do for our relationships, for our mental health, our emotional health, our relationships. Yeah. And it seems to be in the remit of like either a spiritual tradition or a religious tradition. And I wanted to take it away from having to have a faith Thank or you. a belief. Thank you. Yes. And to make it really practical. So if you have a faith, mm -hmm. of course, then you'll be practicing forgiveness because that's probably part of what you are believing. But it's mm -hmm. also a secular ethics practice. It's right. something that makes sense. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be carrying your resentments around with you because right. you're the one who's suffering. And so, right. so really the book came out of me just realizing I had a lot to say about it and I hadn't found a teaching that made it really clear and broke it down in the way I was breaking it down. Cause I was, I was thinking forgiveness is so important. It's in every religious tradition. It's, you know, it's yeah. necessary for all of our relationships. We know that. So mm -hmm. why aren't we all doing it? You know, why aren't we all yeah. going, oh yeah, you know, I, like I take my bins out, you know, my, my garbage every day, <laughs> you know, every week or whatever, or I, you know, I go to a yoga practice, but this is, we don't mm -hmm. talk about what we do for our emotional health. You know, we don't yes. have practices. And yeah. so that was really what I was wanting to do with the book was to make it accessible relevant right. i was trying right. to break a few taboos you know because we all because like right. you're saying sometimes we go oh yeah i've forgiven them but we haven't but right. we know because life will nudge us and we'll go yeah <laughs> uh -uh. Or, or maybe it also is, i teach it like a practice because it's not just a one-off yeah. you may forgive no, somebody, uh -huh. but you may need to forgive them again and yeah. you may need to and that's why it helps to have a way of doing it so yeah yeah so why is it so hard to forgive well that's a really good question i think there's lots of different reasons so in my book i break down five reasons why it's hard and yeah. some of it i think is because we don't even know that that's what we need to do it's a bit it's a uh -huh. bit like Right. You know, like we yeah. like, I don't know, we have come some other kind of problem. It's obvious we have a problem, like if we're you right, know, right, like right. misusing yeah. alcohol or drugs or, right. you know, like we know that because we can see it in right. our behavior, but yeah. we're not we're not tuned in to our resentful behavior or, mm -hmm. you know, because if we think, well, someone's done something wrong, well, then I should, you know, stand up for myself or I should resent them. You know, they did right. me wrong, so I should, you know, so it's it's hard sometimes to spot that it's something that you need to do and right. and one of the other major reasons we find it hard is we don't really know what forgiveness is like what it, what is it exactly so 
I use a really particular definition, which I learned from one of my first teachers, Kay Bradford Brown. And he says that forgiveness is the absolute refusal to hold ill will. So that's resentment, you know, Ooh, that's good. Ag against someone for what they did or didn't do. And I love it because it's because I teach it a bit like this, you know, like this is all the resentment. We gather it all up, all the things that people have done. We hold them again. You know, yeah. this is how we hold it against what, what we're, yeah, you know, like yeah. this, all the things you did. And the yeah. absolute refusal looks like this. Yeah. I'm, I'm not holding it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah, and it, and also for what you did or didn't do, because that's the thing. Sometimes people we resent people because they don't do the thing that we think they should be doing. Oh, that's good too. That's good too. That's good too. I didn't think about that. That yeah. they didn't do. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah. Especially with our parents. We got a lot to work. A lot of work to do. We yeah. Do. We got a lot of work to do. Ooh. Mm hmm. Ooh. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. You got me thinking now. You got me thinking. Now, let me ask you a question. We're talking about forgiveness. Do we have to forgive? That's that's a very good question. I think we don't have to. You can you okay. can take all your resentments to your deathbed. I can be lying there going, "No, I still hate them." And, <laughs> you know, and if, even then, you will have to let go because you can't take okay. them with you. So okay. either you take them to your deathbed, or you do something about it. But I think one of the important things is we don't realize that we're the ones who suffer from our resentment. Right. You know, that it's right. like you may have heard that saying about it's like right. taking poison and hoping the other person yes. will die. Or my you particular die, yeah. favorite, mm -hmm. my favorite is it's like setting yourself on fire and hoping the other yeah. person will be bothered by the will smoke. Put you out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, just that yeah, just yeah. they'll get the smoke. It's not even like they're in the yeah, right. You know, and and, and yeah. we don't realize that that it damages our health. You know, like holding resentment oh, emotionally damages your health. And there's been you know studies done about heart health and blood pressure and stress levels, and Absolutely. so it does that. Absolutely. It also changes Absolutely. your relationship with other people. Like mm -hmm. a, um, a, a, a client I worked with recently, she came to work with me because her current relationship was being impacted by her previous ex because yeah. she hadn't yeah. forgiven him. And so that resentment yeah. was leaking into the new relationship. Ooh. So, you know, leaking. So, uh, yeah, leaking. We don't, uh. we don't realize we I think we don't realize that it's actually costing us, you know, our sleep, our sense of, you know, our self esteem, because we don't we don't think <laughs> resentment is that cool really you know like if you were doing a dating profile you wouldn't right, like, right, right. yeah bear resentments for years never let people forget when they've done me wrong you know it's like it's not an attractive quality <laughs> but you know it's on there i don't want no bs no drama you, yeah. you see it it's there already so it's like oh god got they got resentment now is resentment different from regrets i think so Yep, I think regrets okay. are things that you wish you did differently, um, or okay. think or circumstances that were different. I think there's a relationship right. because really the things we resent are the things that we wish were different. Like we wish somebody was different; they did something or didn't do something. So they're, they're I think they're related. But you can okay. resentment is actually chewing over. Well, I don't know. Maybe I mean regret. You can chew over as well, can't you? But yeah, you you can't change either of them, to be honest. I mean, that's the thing. Oh, when things wow. are are done, they're done. So it's just then yeah. how do you how do you meet the reality right. of something that you wish was different? Now let me ask you a question because I have because I'm always dealing with forgiveness and I've I'm always learning that there's different levels of I have to forgive myself. Like I have to forget myself, forgive myself for not knowing the information I needed to know in order to make a good decision about this particular situation that I'm beating myself up about, you know, so I have to, I have to do that. But with forgiveness, right? You say someone comes to you and says, I forgive you. And being the person I am, I say, for what? <laughs> You know, and then they'll say for everything, for every. So I, I want to be specific about that. I play around, but specifically now when I re, re, if I'm not ready 
to forgive. So I'm not ready to, because there's got to be a point that you're ready. You know, I mean, and I think it, I think I'm not saying that I'm not ready to forgive you, but I'm I'm not. I, I don't think I'm able to forget. Mm-hmm. What do we say in, instead of saying, you know, I forgive you, but I, I but I'm not ready. Like, how do we say, say that? You know, that, yeah, that's such a good point. I I think that when we're talking about forgiveness, there's there's three kinds. One is, okay. and you've talked about this in one of your other podcasts, self-forgiveness. That's yes. really important. Then there's the forgiveness of the other person. And then there's sometimes okay. we need to be forgiven by that person as well. Okay. Sometimes, you know, so some, sometimes right. it can be quite complicated. So there's three right. different strands. Right. The way I teach forgiveness is that you do it for yourself primarily and you do it Either okay. like with somebody like me who coaches forgiveness or somebody like you who, okay. who works with clients, okay. you know, okay. so you, you, you work with it, but not with the person who needs to be okay. forgiven. Gotcha. So it's, gotcha. and, and like back to my, my um, pencil case, uh, my little pot of pens. Okay. This is all my, this is all my resentments. So there's all mm-hmm. these different things I resent you for. If you work through the resentment, so that you get to a point of forgiveness. It may be that there's still something that you need to have a conversation. I need to talk to you about that. You, you don't gotcha. need to know about all these things. You know, like I, I may resent you for things that are nothing to do with you, that are just to do with my, you know, particular right, right, right. preferences or my right, own childhood right. or whatever. But maybe there's something, a boundary issue, or I need to ask you to do something different. Right. So, that, so that's right. the thing. But it's so much clearer. If, you, if you've ever tried to go to somebody with all your grievances, it's very hard for them unless they're in Oh, girl. Yes, girl. Yes, girl. To listen. Yes. <laughs> yes, girl. Yes. So, so you want, so you want to get clear yourself. So that's, so that's yes. part of it. But also I think you're right. I think there's a timing to it. Sometimes it's too soon. Like a friend of mine um, at the moment is too angry. And he in fact said this to me the other day, I'm too angry right, right now right. to forgive that person. I need right. a bit of time with my anger. And, right. and I think, I think that's true because sometimes right. anger works to protect us. And if you think yeah, about it does. Ho- holding a resentment it does. or holding anger, I've just dropped a book, um, is like, it's like protection over the heart. You know, yeah, it, yeah, like, absolutely. It, it, it works until we feel like we can be vulnerable, which is the thing right. that can be most hard. Right. Like to meet right. life with your heart open can feel mm-hmm. way too dangerous. Too, we, we don't want to make ourselves vulnerable. And so we hold on to right. resentment or anger because that feels a bit easier And especially when we're children. And I think when we get older, we realize that this is stopping me feeling joy. This is stopping me feeling intimate with my partner. So that's the time when you want to then let go and and open your heart. But I I feel like things like forgiveness and grief, you know, I think we prefer to hold our resentment because we don't, yeah, Mm -hmm. but also because we don't want to feel the grief. It's too painful. So sometimes right. the resentment feels like it's more palatable. Gotcha. Now, I'm going to talk about an ex, and um, he never said sorry. Um, mm-hmm. Left me with three children to raise on my own, never checked in, never gave any child support. Um, me, my, my oldest son was in and out of prison. And I was always there for my son. He was never there. I, he would stumble across me once or twice and, hey, how's these, you know, the kids? And I, I, I have so much, I don't know if it's resentment. I think it's anger. I want to say it's, it's, it's much anger. Mm-hmm. Number one, you never apologized for never paying child support. And I had to raise these children. Number two, you left me alone with them all. Okay, and number three, and I see my my oldest son talking to him, and I see my daughter talks to him. My my youngest son is still he's still trying, and I get mad at that. How do I work on that? How do I? Because I need to get over that. Because I heard you say dripping into the next relationship, but I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it, Barbara. So how do I? get to the stage of letting go because I have to take down that vulnerable, that thing to be vulnerable. 
but yeah. it, it seems every time I do, he hurts my feelings every time. As soon as I, I go to let go, boom, just something malicious happens. And I'm like, I can't even get past to do that. Help me out with that. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, they're really tough circumstances though, Edna. So, I mean that, you know, like okay. that's probably the hardest it gets. And, and also when it's an ongoing relationship where you have kids right. and so that someone's going to be in your life, that yeah. makes it harder right. because then, then it becomes really, right. a, it's like a spiritual practice at that point because it's hard. And right. the, what's, what's difficult right. is, is keeping clear boundaries and at the same right. time doing okay. your forgiveness work. So that they're, they're right, different. Okay. Sometimes we we think that not forgiving somebody is like holding a boundary, and it's right. they're, they're not related. And when right. I split okay. up with my ex, when he right. he would phone up and he would be like mean and unkind, I would say I'm going to put the phone down, right. and when you're ready to be kind, call me back. And I put the phone down, but I do that every time. I would never stand it. Okay. I would always put the phone down. All right. And I always Christmas, thought that. I always thought that that was being mean, you know what I'm saying? Um, I could call and say, I'm inviting you to Thanksgiving with your children and the rest of my family. Um, and then there would be some craziness, like, you know, just crazy meanness towards me. Then I was like, okay, I'm hanging up. Yeah. Um, so I thought, yeah. I, I thought it was like extra, like mean on my part, but it, I don't want to be damaged any longer, anymore. Does yeah. that make, make sense? Like I want, I mean, you're telling me that's a boundary because I don't feel good. As soon as it happens, I don't feel good. I, it's like fighting, a, like you said, a spiritual war. It's like, I'm tired after it. And it's only been a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so if somebody really cannot be kind to you and you're setting that boundary, then you don't invite them. You just, you just okay. say, until you can right. be kind, you cannot, you, you right. cannot. Okay, come back I, I gotta use that memory. verbiage. Yeah, I gotta use and, that verbiage until, until yeah, yes, and, until because, and and I and I think yeah. the other thing is is that you it's like your what you will what you will tolerate. It's like we teach other people how to treat us. Yeah. So we, yeah. we and and also the other thing about wanting an apology is we can't make our forgiveness dependent on getting an apology because sometimes that's, oh, that's cool. never going to happen. That's really good. And if that's someone, if someone really has good. died, you're never going to get an apology, yeah. you know? So it's, the, so it's yeah. then, how yeah. do you then resolve those things that can never be resolved? So that's, that's why when I yeah. work with somebody, we work in your imagination and we, right, and we right. make certain things right. happen in your imagination that right. gives you an right. internal experience. Right. Uh, which, you just did that, it for me. Yeah. You just did it for me. You just did it for me because the person he used to be is no longer alive. This new person that's just not, a, you know, not ready to change or, or anything is yeah. there. So I just had an internal change there. Oh, good, that. good. Yeah. And, wow. you know, and, and, and it is some of forgiveness is us stopping wanting something to be different. We want That's the other my, person. that was my problem. If, if he was different, you'd be happy. You know, if this person was different, yeah. I'd be happy. You know, it's like, we're always yep. saying that and we can't change the other person. Right. You know, we're like ghosts in other people's lives. All we can do is like, well, what do I want in my heart? Do I want to yeah. be as compassionate as I can to this person? So presumably he has right. his reasons for behaving the way he right. is. Maybe he had a difficult experience growing up. Yeah. Maybe he's got his yeah. own problems, yeah. but they're not your problems. You know your right. your problems and your responsibility. So you're just clear right. about where the boundaries are. This is the behavior I will and won't accept, okay. because we still right. litigate. You know, like we'd litigate if somebody had done something that's that's mm -hmm. wrong. I mean, or illegal. You still litigate. Right. You don't go. You know, oh, I forgive you, and therefore I'm not going to pursue, it, you know, justice. You Charges still... against you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. there does have to be. It's, it doesn't mean it's it's punishment. But it does right. mean that somebody is responsible for the behavior that they've carried out. Yes. Yes. True. Well, you turn the light on for me. Audience, did you see that? Did you just see that light turn on? Because I saw it. I felt it. And that was so good. That I mean, it's teaching me how to move beyond that. You know, because every day, forgiveness, like you said, is just a process. It's part of the process. 
during the day. You know, you might not have did something yesterday. You know, oh gosh, I I I I was supposed to do da da da. You know, call somebody. You have to forgive yourself for not calling that person because if you're like me, I, I, I love my integrity. And when I say I'm going to do something and I don't do it, then I get I beat myself up. I beat myself up all the time. And so I have to learn to forgive myself, have compassion for myself. Let's talk about vulnerability because all that's all we're talking about right now is vulnerability. How do we fold vulnerability into that? Yeah. Well, some of it is like I was saying before is about being really honest, you know, talking about truth and really being honest about our resentments. So some of that is, is mm -hmm. we have to be honest with ourselves that, yeah, actually right. I do. I, I, I judge that person. I feel angry about them. I've, you know, yeah. I wish them, you know, like that they'd be different, or maybe I even wish them, you know, ill will. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's, yeah, exactly. it's really being honest about that. So that, right. that takes a particular kind of vulnerability and some of it, mm -hmm. like you said earlier about, you know, he hurts my feelings is like, vulnerability is is learning how to stand kind of like in your authority without right. you know and and almost like regardless of what comes at you 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 know that you're a worthwhile human being and that even if someone is saying or behaving towards you in a crazy way that your integrity is not damaged by that mm -hmm. who you fundamentally are you know you're the light your consciousness you know right. the, like, who, the essence of you isn't damaged sometimes our egos get right, right. Know, a mm -hmm. bit knocked but that's not necessarily really who we are and vulnerability i think really means feeling fully feeling your feelings and mm -hmm. um, being open to let almost like letting life in and even if you keep clear boundaries, it's it's still, you know, so, somebody might say something really mean to you, but it's only really the things that mm -hmm. we believe about ourselves that really land. You know, if, if someone if someone criticizes yeah. you on something that you believe about yourself, like I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough right. or too much. If someone goes, oh, you're a bit too much. If that's what you believe about yourself, <laughs> then that's going to really hurt. Whereas if yeah. it's something that you don't think is true about you, then you just ignore it. So I think, I think vulnerability is partly about learning, you know, knowing who you are and, right. and risking being seen, you know, and, and yeah. risking feeling, you know, like fe yeah. when, when things happen, you know, that we grieve, you know, letting yourself cry when you need to cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Oh, this is so good audience. This is so good. And I hope that you have questions for her because you got to ask them in the comments. You got to leave them for her because I know that this is a hot topic and we're always talking about that. Can you talk about the ego and all of this? Because I know I have some ego stuff going on and I'm always going to talk about myself. I know I got some ego stuff going on. What makes this being vulnerable so unbearable to some of us? Why does it like take so much of us to get it, you know? <laughs> Well, I think it's because we take everything personally. I mean, everything, you know, when somebody does something, yeah. you think it's, you know, because of us, you know, like, <laughs> but I, you know, like if you go to a dance class, you think everyone's like watching you, but everybody's so self-conscious. They're actually worrying about themselves. You know, like everyone's quite, you know, self, self-concerned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think with ego, it's the same thing. It's like, what we don't like is if somebody does something, it's a bit like the scales are tipped. And we even have that yes, thing about yes. saying, I want to get even, you know, it's like we want to balance right. up the scales and we have this internal version that things should be fair. And I mm -hmm. don't know about you, but things never are fair. You know, like if you grow no, up with never. siblings, never, you know, never, never. even though your parents say, I love you all the same, you know, it's like, mm, uh, yeah. no, no, nah. always. And, and we have, you know, it's like life isn't fair, but we have this kind of internal, like it should be. And, and so I think the ego, does a little bit of that sort of well who's above me who's below me what yeah. points have i got okay so i might not be that pretty but i'm intelligent or i might not have this but i've got that and we you know we're kind of point scoring and i think we do that in our relationships and if someone's right, right. mean we, we you know we want to either retaliate or we withhold you know well if they're like that then i'm going to be like that you know to kind of compensate right, right. and so there's always this sort of egoic sort of deal you know we're, we're always trading going on. yeah 
Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's so that's that's what I feel like. It's like the ego is in there, particularly with our resentments, and you know, and and resentment can, like I said, it can provide things that benefit us or seem to benefit us. So it can feel like protection. It can also mm -hmm. give us the moral high ground. You know, like, well, at least I'm not like my mother, you know, or at least I'm not like that right, person, right. you know, we kind of point score or um, we can use we can use our resentment as an excuse. You know, if we've got a crabby boss, we'll go, well, I'm entitled to steal the stationery because my boss is an idiot, you know, and so we justify our behavior or that person does that. So I'm going to behave like that or we use our resentment, you know, and this is all ego, you know, I'll if they, you know, I'll avoid having that difficult conversation yeah. i'm just going to resent someone or mm -hmm. cut them out or treat them in right, that right. way you know so right yeah the ego's in there that's, all the time good. yeah yeah so uh, i want the last question i want to ask you is, is um about the chapter about the price you pay you pay um you the price that it really costs you you yeah. know and the cost that you're paying for not forgiving could you just go over a couple of points of that so that the audience can really get what it really is costing them. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it looks just what we've talked about. The the deal you get, the resentment. It feels like you've got a load yeah. of stuff. You've got justification. You've got the moral high ground. You've got power. You got. If you look at all mm -hmm. of those things, they're not they're not really real. You know, like you haven't really got power. Right. You, what you've got is a really unsteady right. kind of like resentment that you're holding on to. So you're sort of stuck mm -hmm. justifying right. your behavior. It's like, well, that robs you of your autonomy. You're not doing something because you're a free, free human being. You're doing it to mm -hmm. get back at the other person or to make a point or, you know, so it takes that takes away your autonomy. You know what it costs you. And like I was saying this at the beginning, holding resentment. Right costs you in your physicality it costs you high blood pressure it costs you your sleep it costs you peace of mind it costs you you know yeah. in your gut health you know if you've got a clenched gut or a clenched jaw yeah. or you know you it might cost you yeah. in this relationship even though it's something that happened years ago with your previous partner yeah. you know it costs you your freedom and and i think all right. of those things we are completely oblivious. We don't think that holding resentment costs us anything, but it has a massive cost. Yeah. You know, and it keeps you awake it at is night. A big cost. You know, you're you're basically yeah. you're going to sleep every night with that person, you know, and like, well, they left seven years ago, so but I'm still waking up with them every morning, you know, because <laughs> it's on my mind, you know. So so it, it yeah. <laughs> the cost is. And then I think ultimately, Edna, that the most important cost is for us as a humanity. Because unless we learn mm -hmm. how to forgive, we mm -hmm. are doomed to stay in war after war after war until we can learn mm -hmm. how to let go of our grievances and settle them in a different way. So ultimately, yeah. it costs us a world at peace. And that was the other thing really that inspired me to write my book was the potential of forgiveness. If you think about it, if you do your forgiveness work and you're committed, I do mine, all your listeners do their forgiveness work, mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. around the world, you know, we could do a lockdown, a forgiveness lockdown. And in two I weeks, do <laughs> all of our forgiveness. Yep. Uh -huh. And then we would come out into a different world because we choose to. And so the fact that we don't right. do that means that we're sitting on a lot of power to transform not just our own individual lives but our workplaces our kids work you know mm -hmm. kids schools you know everything we could do that right. we could have we could transform humanity with one little practice that's beautiful so that's you know that's that's, that's the what it is cost. a whole practice it's a whole practice yeah. and we need to have practice to do this we need yeah. to have practice in doing it and the first ex person would be yourself is practicing with yourself and, and being yeah. compassionate. Cause I think compassionate and forgiveness are two different things being softer with yourself. Cause I had to learn that cause I was always uh, beating myself up, you know, and wait a minute, you know, I, I was compassionate to other people. You just made a mistake, but I would be really hard on myself. The same, same exact mistake. I would be hard on myself. So I practiced, you know, compassion on myself. Yeah. I had to do that for myself. But forgiveness is a whole package. It's a whole thing with multifaceted layers that just like us. <laughs> and we have to learn to really understand it. And your book, Forgiveness Made Easy, is the ticket 
ladies and gentlemen, is the ticket. It's the ticket because it breaks it down um, so easily. I love it. And you can reuse it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mark the chapters like I did, but I know. Be real with yourself. Mark the chapters. Um, and truly learn to let go. This book is teaching me, just like you took teaching me today. Barbara, how can the audience get in touch with you? I know that we're going to have that information available in the comments, but how can they get in touch with you? So um, for my website, which is forgivenessmadeeasy.co.uk, so co.uk, because um, yeah. it's a UK website. Um, and yeah. then um, and on my website, they can contact me if they want to do one-to-one -one work with me. I also host things called Forgiveness Fields, where we do our forgiveness okay. practice together. So it's on Zoom and it's a group practice and I lead everybody through the seven steps of the forgiveness made easy practice. It takes 90 minutes, but you could bring something like, oh, I wanna forgive my boss. You come to the class, you work with your microphone off, but you actually get to release uh -huh. a resentment. So it's a place okay. a bit like you'd come to do a yoga practice, you come and do a forgiveness practice. Wow, that, that makes sense. That make, that's really good. So that's yeah. perfect. Okay. So audience, you know, this is the end of our show, but I really do appreciate you, Barbara. You have done a class on, oh no, you've shown us a, a real life life coaching class with you on forgiveness by using me as an example. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you for that. Thank you so much for being here. Like you are really magnificent. Keep doing what you're doing. Show the world all about forgiveness and we shall be in touch really soon. You know, because I think that we have a lot, a lot of work to do together. There's no, re there's not, a, there's not, or there's no circumstance that we, we didn't meet together. There's a reason why we did. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate you. The audience appreciates you. And we're going to say goodbye for now. Bye now, yeah. audience. Thanks, Edna.